Good day, long riders and YouTubes, YouTubers that are new here. Welcome here. Make sure you click and subscribe right there. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. In today's video, we're going to tie a Blue Quill Emerger. That's a really nice fly. I love it. And uh, we're going to get to the vice. One thing before we go, make sure you like, subscribe. Is um, I want to report news to you. We are now 125 away. We have all the rest to get our internet cut, turned back on. It's going to be shut off Monday evening. So we only need to raise $125 yet. So if you care about that or this channel gets shut off, make sure you go and click the GoFundMe link. And I want to thank David Vilex, Russell Proctor, Rich Hash, Thomas Mahoney, Todd Wallace, and Austin Ewart for donating so far. And like I said, we're only 125 away. We get the $125, and we will keep the internet live on Monday evening at the close of business on Monday. If we don't come up with the money, and I'm sorry because I just posted that we're gonna do a video every day, and he's like, "You can still get shut off." I was like, "Well, I got faith in all you guys." So I just wanted to make that announcement, do a shout out to all them people that helped us so far, and let you know if you're interested in what's going on with that. So we're gonna have a really cool fucking, uh, really cool emerger for you to see today. So we better get to that because you're gonna w not want to miss this one. And make sure you stay to the end of this video for some more information that you won't want to miss. Now let's get to the vice right now. You and me, we meant to be in the great outdoors. Ever free. We're going to start by debarbing a size 18 caddis hook. Make sure you debarb your hooks, it's easier to pull out of their mouth if you're going to practice catch and release. Now we're going to tie on some 70 denier black thread and run it all the way back to well into the bend of the hook. Now you're going to take some white ice dubbing roll it into like a little noodle and then you're going to tie that on and that's going to represent the shuck of this fly dragging behind it as it's merging Now we're going to cut off the waste material and I'd save that because it's already rolled and maybe you can use it to tie flies. I got three flies out of one of these little noodles I made. And you're going to finish running the thread up and making that tapered body. And you're going to make sure your body's tapered and smooth for the next step. Now you're going to take a peacock curl and with the part where it's attached to the feather, you're going to take one peacock curl off. Put the end so the end's facing that way, and you want to go towards that end with a pencil eraser. I'll put a video up here to show you how to do it, but it's an old video, so I'm not sure how clear it is. But anyway, you just take your pencil and go like eraser over it, and it'll take all them hairs off and strip it down to just a piece that you're going to tie in and use that for the body of this fly. Now you're going to take that stripped peacock curl, tie it in, and then you're going to make sure your body's smooth as you can get and with that nice cigar tapered body, and you're going to run your thread up to right behind the eyelet. Now 
Now you want to start wrapping that. <clears throat> excuse me. You're starting to start wrapping that peacock curl around the hook shank all the way up. And you want to lay each wrap next to the other one. And this will make a really cool ribbed body for this emerger. And I know you can't really see it. I mean, pretty good, but you can't really see a good detail. But when I zoom in to show you the fly at the end of this video, you'll see how it's wrapped and it really looks like a really cool looking body to it. Now we got some light gray uh, floating yarn. Um, I like this. I don't like the deer hair as much. It gets wet. This freaking yarn really floats. I mean, it really, really floats. So we're going to use that. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut off one end square. And then we're going to lay it down. And we're just going to leave a little bit sticking out behind our thread wraps. We're going to make the thread wraps up. I make a little teeny bit right in the middle of that. Where we can tie now what I like to do here is I like to put a whip finish on it head cement it that that head cement will bond with the wing and keep the wing from flying out because uh, I don't know if you tied many mergers but if you tie an emerger and you don't head cement that part, sometimes the wing will fly out when you're casting it or after a couple of fish. So we do this to make a little bit of a sturdier fly. Now we're going to take a dark blue dun feather and gauge it to, so it don't stick too far down past the hook. And we're going to tie that in. Sorry, I jumped the gun earlier. Now you want to head cement it. That'll make the wings stick, like I said earlier. Plus, your feather won't pull out when you start wrapping it because it'll bond everything together. So we're going to head cement it. Let that dry. Now we are going to start wrapping our hackle. Give it a good four or five uh, turns around. Make sure you hackle this pretty good. I like a lot of hackle. You keep these up right at the surface of the water. And... Once we get done, we're going to tie that off right behind the wing. Now you want to take that wing, pull back on it, and put some thread wraps in front of it. That'll get your wing to stand up. So after you put it, start forming a head up front, then you want to whip finish it. And that's almost done. We got one more step, and this is a this fly is almost done. Now, you want to spin your hook in the vise so you can get to that tail and you just want to leave that little, little piece hanging out. I don't know, maybe a quarter inch. Leave about a quarter inch there and that'll represent the shuck as it was hatching, dragging behind it. So now that we're done, let's take a really good look at this fly close up and you can see how awesome this fly really is.
hope you guys like that amazing fly. That's our quill emerger, blue quill emerger, and we tighten a size six, 18. Um, one thing is, these emergers will work if there's a cat. That might work as a caddis. It could work as uh, maybe you have large blue winged olives in your area. They might take it for a blue. They could take it for a lot of different flies. Same way with the WD-40 we tied. Wait a minute, you don't know that we tied these? Go back and look at our playlist later. At the end of this video, you'll have, we have a playlist right here. Make sure you go back and watch our old videos. You want to put every one of these flies in your box so that when you get to the creek, let's say you get to the water and you're like, wow, look at that. There's a blue winged olive hatching. You have the merger. You'll have the dry fly. You'll have all the stages. Same now, we're working on blue quills. If the blue quills merge or hatching, you can use the blue quill merger, the blue quill dry. So make sure you tie all these, and when you get to the creek, you'll be ready for any situation. And like I said, you can pull out one of these and go, hey, man, this might work for this caddis hatch, even though it's blue quill merger. You might be able to pull out a caddis merger, and it might represent the blue quill merger. Yeah. So make sure you try everything in your box. Just, you know, you never know what's going to work. Like I said, I had a spot time this year that there was caddises all over the water. On top of the water, none were hitting the water, but fish every once in a while, I think the wind blew and knocked one in. And so I tied a caddis on, I caught a fit, I caught a couple fish on it by skating it. And that's one thing, you know, like we'll teach you later in videos about like skating caddises when they're skating across the water, how it could just strike, stuff like that. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and don't miss any of these upcoming videos because by the time we're done with this series, you'll have be prepared for any situation you will find when you get to the water. You have flies, um, all that. Um, we're going to send you back somewhere in this video. You can see an opportunity to go check it out now. It always stays up here in the I button. A chance to check out the dry fly version that we tied. Last year we did a lot of pattern flies where the typical dries. and This year we're going away from that. And this is another original to everything fly fishing tie. I didn't learn this anywhere. I uh, tied it, and I encourage you to do that. Take these patterns and maybe do it in a different color. You never know what works. Because like that, the caddis that was hatching, I put, found one later on the surface, picked it up, and it was tan. And I had a black caddis on, black elk hair caddis on, but it still killed him that day. I caught a lot of fish. So you can never know what you're going to, you know, make sure you try everything in your box. You don't know what the fish's appetite's going to be for that. Even though that, the blue quill is emerging, and you can see mergers on the surface. Doesn't mean they're not going to take a caddis merger instead. It's you know the fish are pinky. You know never know what they're going to do, and it changes from fish to fish. So you might catch a fish here on a caddis, and down the creek it, they're taking blue quills. So that's just something to keep in mind. I wanted to give you that information. That's our bonus for staying to the end of the video. In this video, uh, I love tying this. It's a great looking fly. It's it kills them. So make sure you tie them up, and I love tying these merger patterns. It's entertaining to me. Um, I love bringing you different patterns and creating these patterns for you. And uh, I tested them. You know they're gonna work. So make sure you tie all of these patterns up. You all have a good day. Thank you for being here. And don't forget to subscribe. Keep your lines wet, out of the trees, and only give them fish a sore lip.